Well, we're so glad we're here in First Peter uh, today. It's wonderful. I've texted out on this particular uh, portion of Scripture the last two days. I um, kind of the the text that we're going to uh, look at uh, is this thing of 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 holy living, holy living. There is um, a wonderful truth in the Bible that tells us that we should uh, live a holy life. Verse 15, it says, But as he which hath called you is holy, that's God, that's God, and be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Now, our conversation in the in the King James Bible, the word conversation in it, 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 it engages more than our speech. It means our way of life. It's it's everything that we do. So we as now God is perfectly holy. He never does anything wrong. Uh, Jesus lived sinlessly on, on this earth. He he never he never sinned one time. Uh, he was tempted in all points like as you and I are but without sin that's Jesus okay because he's God God can't sin but you and I we got tempted and what happened to us we sinned didn't we and and the Bible says this if you say that you have no sin you lie and the truth is not in you first John 1 8 but first John 1 9 tells us if if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness so, uh, so here it tells us uh, that uh, we should live uh, a holy life, not just in our speech, but in our conduct and what we do. Verse 16, it says, Because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. So that's our example. See, the only thing going to go to heaven is uh, holy people. And you say, well, how can that be? Well, the only way you can be a holy person is you have to be forgiven. It's very simple. You and I are sinful. No sin will enter heaven. You can't go to heaven uh, as a sinner. You have to go to heaven as a cleansed person, as one that your sins are forgiven. And the only way your sins can be uh, uh, forgiven are through the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of his resurrection. Uh, that's uh, that's what it that's what it talks about. I uh, I, I, I mentioned that. Um, uh, he had uh, verse three. Uh, go back up to the front. It says, "Blessed be the God." One three. First Peter one three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy. You see. Mercy, the only reason you and I can be saved is because of mercy. We, we don't deserve it. There's nobody here deserves to be saved. There's nobody in the world. Someone says, that's a good person. There are no good people. The Bible says there's none good, no, not one. All have sinned, come short of the glory of God. So it says, His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a livelihood. We've been begotten or we've been born or born again. You see, you must be born again. People tell me all the time they think their religion is going to get them to heaven. Or some people think they were born again when they were baptized. Or some when they joined the church. No, the new birth only comes from personal faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, only my, my, my grandson Stephen sitting here on the, uh, in, in the front uh, pew. Uh, 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 he has several uh, generations of, of, of preachers. Uh, historically, my grandfather and my father and myself but because my grandfather was a preacher and my father was a preacher and I'm a preacher it that don't help Stephen in the heaven Stephen's got to come on his own he's got to be born again everybody some people think because their grandma was a good Christian or their mother was or so on and so forth that he belonged to a certain faith no uh, uh, you need to be born again and and don't and don't forget that and that's what it says according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us born us uh, unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You see, everything has to do with the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. That's what it's all about. I'm, I'm different than my 
my grandfather and my father were Pentecostal preachers. And I'm a Baptist preacher. I, I, I wasn't led to Christ, by my, although my grandfather tried hard to lead me to Christ. He was quite a soul winner. Uh, Grandpa Varga, he was, I mean, he was always trying to get beat. He was a great soul winner. My dad, not so much. Uh, he, uh, uh, he didn't push me. My, my mother, now she was for trying to get me saved all of her living days. But I was led to Christ by a Methodist preacher. It's not a matter of Assemblies of God, Pentecostal or Methodist. I'm a Baptist preacher. None of those denominations has anything to do other than they present the gospel, you see. And if the, if the gospel is presented, then uh, we can be uh, have a lively hope in Jesus Christ. And I hope you have it. You know if you have it tonight. There's some of you here. I look, I look along the rows here, and, and I'm looking the first row and the second and third and on and on. And, and, and I see some of you folks that are here today by your own, uh, uh, you, you've testified to this that you're not saved. I mean, there's people in here that says, I ain't been saved yet, Pastor. I pray for you. I care for you. I want you to be saved. God wants you. God's not willing that you should perish. And I'm glad you're back today. Make this today. Mine was April 4th, 1969. How, how many of you say, I got a getting saved day? I know I'm saved. I've been saved. Okay. Well, that's good. And, and you can have. Why don't you get it today, man? Uh, why don't you get born again? Even this very day, you can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and, 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 and you can be saved. And you can have that life of hope. And here's the reason. Look at verse 4. It says, to an, in, to an inheritance incorruptible, wow, and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Oh, my. Incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth. You know what that means? You can't lose your salvation. If you're really saved, you got it. Isn't that wonderful? Because it's nothing you deserve. It's nothing you can work for. It's nothing you can earn. It's only thing you can do is repent and come like a child and say, Lord, be mercifully a sinner and save me. I did that April 4th, 1969. That's what you need to do. You keep following the wrong. I mean, it's easy to do. What's holding you up? It, you don't know. Uh, listen, I, I just, someone reported doing this. I didn't see it on the news. Someone said, I seen on the, on the news, uh, Channel 13 this morning, that uh, on, uh, I think they said, was it on the Sea Breeze Bridge? One, one of the bridges uh, said a young man got routed over uh, with a bicycle, got killed. Any of you see that on the news today? Several of you seen it. I didn't see it. I didn't watch no news today yet, but they seen it. So a young man. Uh, do you think when he took off on that bicycle early this morning that, that or in the middle of the night or whenever he got killed, did, did, did you think he's figuring on dying? Young people like, like Doris uh, always says, the, 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 the Doris says this, uh, young people may die, old people must die. You get old, you got to die. Thank God for Dora. She's 94. We celebrated her birthday here in June, and she don't look it. She looked like she's in her 60s, but um, she's living on borrowed time. I'm living on borrowed time. If you're over 70, you're on borrowed time. The Bible only promises three score and ten. That's 70. Uh, so, but you don't know. I don't know who the youngest is in here. I think uh, Willie. I think you're older than I am. How old are you, Willie? 105. <laughs> He's 80. So he's older than I am, and Doris is older than I am. And anyone else in here older than 77? That's it. Two beat me in here. So, Willie, we're on borrowed time. But um, that's okay. I'm ready to go. I like being here. I'm glad I can preach today. The reason I'm glad I can preach, I know some of you need to get saved today, and I, I want to you know, see you get saved. Uh, I pray for you. But... Um, uh, you don't know. You you don't know that that young man got killed on a bicycle on the bridge this morning. He didn't figure on dying. You don't you don't know what's going to happen. I I think of so many instances where all of a sudden death was sudden and sometimes violent or whatever. You don't know. It could be a horrific accident. It, it you don't know. Could be a heart attack. 
You don't know. I'm not trying to scare you, but the Bible says this in Amos. It says, prepare to meet thy God. You don't know. He said, well, I don't plan on dying. You might not, but you don't know when you're going to die. Some people have uh, more of a, you know, they've got terminal illness, and they, and they go to the hospice, and they say you're going to be dead in a, in a month or two, or sometimes they last longer or whatever. But listen, I have an inheritance, and if you're saved, you have an inheritance. As it says here, we're kept by the a power of God. Uh, it says in inheritance, verse 4, incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. So we, 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 I got a ticket for heaven. I got a mansion in heaven that's reserved. It says who are kept by the power of God uh, through faith unto salvation. You see, faith is what it's all about. I texted someone yesterday, a hyper-Calvinist that believed in fatalism and that anyone that dies, uh, you're, you're either, uh, you've been pre- uh, God has chosen you for heaven or hell. God doesn't want anyone to go to hell. He wants everyone to go to heaven. So, and there, there's not, more people are going to hell than heaven. You know, you know that because men love darkness. Men and women love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. So if you love evil, you, you'll stay lost. But it says here, uh, who are kept by the power of God through faith. Faith is everything. You get saved by, by grace are you saved through faith. Not that of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Isn't that wonderful that we're saved by grace through faith? I've been saved. Some would say, you know, Every time I hear you preach, if it's on the uh, Facebook or YouTube or in person or whatever, it's always the same old thing. Jesus died and paid for your sins and you need to be saved. Yeah, that's all I got. That's the big deal. Ain't nothing else matters. You think there's anything more important? <clears throat> the Bible says this. <clears throat> the Bible says this. Uh, uh, that if, you, uh, uh, if you're not saved... Uh, you can't go to heaven. So uh, that's it. it, it the the, the uh, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, who pastored at uh, Metropolitan Tabernacle in London, England, uh, he said uh, that uh, you haven't preached unless you preach Christ. Unless unless someone preaches a gospel message, unless someone preaches a gospel message, they've not really preached because that's all that really matters. And so that's what I'm telling you. And I preach it again. And I tell it again because it's the same old story. Uh, you say, well, I'm sick of hearing it. You know why you're sick of hearing it? I'll tell you why you're sick of hearing it. You're not saved. You're going to hell. You're going to hell. You say, oh, people. I talk to people. They say, oh, yeah. I'm saved. I doubt it. If you act like there's nothing to it, and why are you talking about it? Something wrong with you. I think you're a child of the devil. I don't think you're saved. You're lost as Hogan's goat. You don't know which way is up. If you're sitting in here today, and, and I mean some people, people quit, won't come to this church because they say, I'm tired. All you talk about is getting saved. The reason you don't like it because you're not saved. Go to some lost church where... Uh, uh, you can die and go to hell and, and the preacher never even tell you nothing about it. That's okay. That's right. Plenty of churches like that. Go up and down. Go up and down Ridgewood. You can find a hundred. You can find a lot more churches uh, that'll tickle your ears and let you go to hell than churches that are preaching the gospel and trying to get you to heaven. You ought to thank God you're here today and you can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and get saved today. It ought to bother you. It ought to trouble you. I hope it affects you so much that if you go out of here unsaved that you can't sleep tonight. I hope you have nightmares about hell. I do. Why? Because I don't want you to go to hell. I mean, if you have nightmares about hell, you'll say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me, and repent and turn from your wicked way and be saved. Oh, you'll have joy unspeakable and full of glory. Verse 6. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, uh, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. 
Now, do we ever get do we ever get uh, tempted as a Christian? Well, sure we do. Now, I love this verse. It says in First uh, Corinthians ten thirteen, there hath no temptation taken you, but is common to man. That's for a Christian. But God is faithful, and will with temptation make a way of escape that you may bear it. Isn't that wonderful? That you and I, as a child of God. God won't let us be tempted above which you're able to make a way of escape. But sometimes we don't escape and we sin, don't we, as Christians? Would you admit that? I'll admit it. We do that. Sad to say, we try harder. And, and uh, yet, uh, you, know how you, uh, you know how you overcome sin? Same way you got saved, by faith. You put your, you, that sin that besets you, you cigarette smokers, you alcohol drinkers, you t- I know someone in here just told me lately uh, taking cocaine recently using cocaine we got cocaine users in here we got alcohol users and she says that kind of that's kind of people come to your church that's kind of people go to every church <laughs> hey, no. these these lily pure uh holier than thou churches uh, you know what God does when he looks down at a church like that? He vomits. He throws up. Bunch of hypocrites and Pharisees. You better get right with God. That's the only kind. And, and uh, uh, if you if you haven't, you better get right with him today because that's, that's God's church. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Verse 8, look at here, verse 8. Whom having not seen, I haven't seen him yet, but why? I live by faith. I've trusted Christ by faith. God delivers me from sin uh, by faith. I was talking about you yesterday, Travis, my 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 my, uh, uh, my preacher. Uh, he might have seen you. What time did you work till last night, Travis? Oh well, they, they were. It was after you were gone. They they, they were at Popeyes at the pavilion. Uh, Travis, and I'm not supposed to be doing this. We're supposed to get dignified now that we're on this. We don't. Uh, I'm not worried about being undignified. But they was at Popeyes going through the drive-through, and I called them on the phone last night. And and uh, my daughter missed it. She said, "Man, I was through here. We come through Wednesday. They like Popeyes. You must be making good chicken out there, Travis." The best. You mix the best, and we got the best cooking chicken. <laughs> I told him, I said, Travis makes it. He's the best at what he does. And and uh, uh, anyway, how did I get talking about Popeyes? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, how on earth did I get? I don't know. I get off the. There's a good reason why I went to Popeyes, and Travis. I don't know. Did you ever go? That's what I was talking about. That my, my daughter says, yeah, I've seen that advertisement. They had a special. On t- I didn't get out there. It's too far out there. I go to the Popeyes nearby here. Uh, but anyway, um, it's wonderful. It says here, whom, verse 8, uh, having not seen, we love. Ye love in whom though now ye see him not. We don't see him. We live by faith. Amen. Amen. Yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. I just rejoice. I rejoice day after day. What a wonderful thing it is that I'm I'm saved, and I'm I'm saved by grace through faith. And God has saved me, April fourth, nineteen sixty nine. I hope He saved you. Some of you need to get saved today. Some of you have even told me that you're not saved. Don't put it off another day. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, uh, and 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 be saved. Verse 9, it says, Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. That's all that matters, the salvation of your soul. Being saved, going to heaven. You see, that's the end of your... The end of your faith is heaven. By faith. Hebrews 11, it says, starts out in verse 1, it says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I can see my home in heaven. I can see my mansion over there in glory by faith. I know that I'm saved. I believe that Jesus shed his blood on Calvary's cross. I believe he was buried. 
I believe he rose again from the grave on the third day. I put my faith in that. All of my faith and trust is in the Lord Jesus Christ. How wonderful that is. Have you done it? Do you know for sure you're going to heaven? The only way you'll know is it's by faith. By grace through faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. And not that of yourself. It is the gift of God. Whether you're in this auditorium here this morning. Or you're out there in the, in the listening audience. Out there in the, in the Facebook. Out on the internet. Oh by faith. I love it. Receiving the end of your faith. Even the salvation of your. All the thing matters is salvation. If you're not saved you're lost. If you put your faith in the finished work of Christ. In the gospel. That Christ died for your sins and shed his blood and rose again. I'm so happy about that. And if you're not happy about that today, you're probably not saved. And you can yawn and say, come on, get done, preacher. I want to have that chicken dinner. You'll get the chicken dinner. But I'm telling you, you need to believe by faith. And you need to be saved. Because there'll be a, there'll be a day when uh, <laughs> you ain't going to get no chicken dinner in hell. I don't think I don't think I don't think he eat it all in hell. I think he just weep and wail and mourn and and gnash your teeth, burning and falling in darkness. Hell is terrible. You said you trying to scare me. I wish I could scare you. I wish I could scare you so you didn't go to hell. You think about how terrible that I can describe hell and how terrible you think about it. It's a million times worse. You'll never rest. You'll be tortured and tormented forever and ever. We, we know nothing but beginning and end. There's no end to hell. But on the other hand, there's no end to heaven. Amen? I'm going to be with Jesus. No more pain. No more sorrow. The former things are passed away. You'd be burning in hell if you're not saved. I'll be praising God in heaven. Jesus is the light. Amen. Get it today. If you don't have it, get it. Get it out there on the on the internet. Praise God. Uh, searching what? If what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testifieth beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that shall follow. The sufferings of Christ. He died for our sins, didn't he? And then what happened? He rose up on the third day. Up from the grave he arose. Amen. Victorious. The death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. My hope is in that. I'm a believer. I have faith in it. I've exercised my faith in Christ and I'm saved. I hope you are today. I hope you people out there on the internet that are watching this or will watch it in the future. Watch it get live now if you are. You need to be saved. You need to be saved. Let us pray. Lord, thank you now for these precious ones that are here. You say, Pre preacher, I am saved. No head, Nobody looking around, just the preacher. Say, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. I have no doubt. I have faith. I'm a born-again Christian. Slip your hand up. Let me see that. You may put it down. Thank you. Thank you. You may put it down. All right. You put your hands down. You say, Preacher, I don't know I'm going to heaven. I don't know I'm going to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. I need you to pray for me. Just slip your hand up. Let me see your hand. Yes, 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 yes. We got about ten hands raised or more. Heavenly Father, you're working. Praise God. So many. Dear one, that's the blessed Holy Spirit speaking to you this morning. You that are out there in the viewing audience, ten or so have raised their hand here in church. They need to be saved. They don't know God. They don't know they're going to heaven. Maybe you're out there and you're in the same condition. Would you trust Christ? You that are here in the auditorium, would you give your heart to Christ? Would you come in simple faith like a child and say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Just say, Lord, forgive me. I believe you died for me and rose again. Out there in the viewing audience or here, I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer. I'll pray it out loud. You pray it in your heart. This is a prayer. 
pray it and receive the free gift of eternal life. This is a prayer. Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross and rose from the grave the third day. The best I know how, with an honest heart, I turn from my sins, receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. You say, Pastor, I prayed that prayer today and I, I meant it. I, I did the best I could. And I, I asked Jesus to save me today. And I meant it as best I could. I meant it in my heart. Would you slip your hand up? Say, I meant it today. Would you slip your hand up? Let me see your hands. Raise them up high. Raise them up high. Raise them up high. Lord, we thank you for these eight precious souls that have prayed here in our church auditorium. We thank you for them. I did it April 4th, 1969. I'm thankful for these eight. You that are out there in the viewing audience, I, I pray that many of you have done this today. It's the most important, putting our faith and trust in the finished work of Christ, that he shed his blood on Calvary's cross and he rose from the grave. There's nothing more important. Those that have not yet been saved in this auditorium, and I know several, I pray to be saved soon. And you that are out there in the viewing audience, we're so thankful, dear Lord, for the saving power of Jesus Christ. And it's just as effective today as it's ever been. Thank you for the food that you've given us to partake of. Bless our fellowship around the table now. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Dear ones, if you're here today and you've trusted Christ, I'd like to talk to you afterward. I'd like to put a Bible in your hand, give you some literature, some encouragement. If you that are out there in the viewing audience, if you've received Christ, contact us and we'd be glad to help you as much as we can. We're so glad that uh, we've had this time together uh, this morning. God bless each one of you.